Good morning. My name is Fabrizio Cagliada. I am full professor of radiology at the University of Pavia and uh, chief of the residency school of uh, radiology in the same university. Uh, formerly, I was the director of the radiology department of Policlinico San Matteo and now I am uh, opening a new ultrasound unit in the Casimiro Mondino uh, Neurological Foundation uh, also in Pavia. Normal interest that was uh, contrast and ultrasound and Doppler, now I'm moving to a neurological uh, direction to the examination with ultrasound of uh, peripheral nerves, both in uh, trauma and uh, degenerative disorders. And uh, we try to do that uh, by diagnosis and also by interventional to try to understand how to repair something. Uh, in my normal life, I'm also vice president of the Italian Society of Radiology and uh, general secretary of the Italian Society of Ultrasound. This brief talk is to discuss together about uh, the possibility to reduce the dose of some of you during a, a contrast enhancement ultrasound assignment. We started with a full 4.8 milliliter in dire vial dose injection, but at first some time the accepted dose become 2.4 milliliter. Nowadays, one milliliter dose is commonly adopted in all premium scanners and resonance 7 is perfectly working with such a dose. But if you look with sufficient attention, you can recognize an excessive blooming or resonance 7 clips, even with one milliliter sound. If you look here, with this, in this two video, really, obtained with one milliliter, there is an evident blooming on the liver and there is a some sort of masking of the deeper portion of the liver. And in this case, is a splenomangioma. You see how the quantity of contrast is really excessive and is really masking all the portion of tissue all around the lesion. So you certainly recognize that this is a but you really are, you really have too much contrast. So for the reason, we try to understand this. So we started to explore the result of a lower dose injection from one half of milliliter to one ten of milliliter. So from 0.5 milliliter to 0.1 milliliter and let you judge the result. Of course, for this kind of application, you need to change the syringe. We don't use the original Braco syringe, but we substitute with an uh, insulin-like uh, in syringe, and we inject, and after that, we push with the saline to push the micro bubble along the tube extension and the vein. And look at this case. We have a young lady with a mass on the left liver. Unfortunately, color doctor is not helpful because we are so near the heart. And here you have the same kind of lesion uh, injected on your left with one milliliter and on your right with 0.1 milliliter and you can recognize that the pattern is absolutely similar. So this globular announcement pattern, centrifugal pattern, is evident both on different dose of contrast. And after two minutes, on your right, you recognize the plan of management of the, of the lesion, three minutes, and on your right, 0.1 milliliter, three minutes, you still recognize the replenishment of the lesion and uh, your diagnosis is made on both ways. Now we have a case with an overweight patient even with metabolic syndrome and you see a lesion deep 
more than 10 centimeter deep and on a steatotic patient, what it is is difficult to understand, of course, is it possible? We injected 0.5 milliliter and look, you really can see the replenishment from the periphery to the center of this lesion. And after 56 minutes here, you see still the replenishment of the lesion, even if we have more than 10 centimeters deep. So the dose, reducing dose, is quite enough to understand that this is an atypical hemangioma with typical CUS behavior. Here in the case, uh, casual observation in a patient with family history of Rendu Osler disease. And we are, we are thinking to be in case of uh, shunt, arteriovenous shunt, in this kind of patient is very easy to find, it's a very large shunt. So we perform the CUA examination and the surprise, this is absolutely not a shunt, this uh, is a uh, the pattern is completely similar to the manjama, and you see at uh, 27 seconds, 28 seconds, three minutes, complete replacement, I flow a manjama. So this is the case. So you see that only one half milliliter, but you can understand perfectly. Now another case, young lady with a, some sort of cystic lesion, a small hyperechoic lesion just near, Color of is absolutely not helpful in this case because we don't see anything. And also, elastography not helpful. Probably something more stiff inside, but very not understandable at all. Now, we look also elastography, but it's not helpful. And we start with contrast. Here you see, and it's a surprise because. Uh, we have a very big enhancement from the center of the lesion going from the center to outside of the lesion. And we understand that there are not only one lesion, but probably two lesions similar, and with the same kind of behavior, big enhancement from the center to the periphery of the lesion. Okay, now 40 seconds. Almost complete replenishment. And now at two minutes, we don't recognize the lesion. It is completely replenished. Now we understand a little bit. Two minutes and 46. We inject them a second time. We inject them one milliliter to understand <coughs> if it was better, but this was absolutely the same with a little bit more blooming. And uh, this, uh, now we tried with the maximum intensity projection, both on uh, one milliliter and uh, 0.5 milliliter. And you really see that uh, the contrast is going from the center to the periphery of the lesion in both ways. We perform an MRI in this case, and you uh, see T1 is uh, uh, high intense, T2 is highly high intense as water, and in phase out phase, no fat inside. And uh, arterial, portal, late, and biliary, you see the behavior is similar from the center to the periphery, and this is an inside out hemangioma. Very rare case, but still present, of course, probably the first time I see, and probably the last time I see one. <laughs> okay, now is a young patient with recent finding of hepatitis C. At the examination, you see a small hypericolic, slightly hypericolic lesion just near the kidney, and uh, Conrad Doppler, even in this case, not helpful, but the same patient has a second lesion here, very hyperechoic, but no one of us will think about the uh, possibility of an hemangioma. Color Doppler has, uh, in many cases, not helpful at all. 
So we started with contrast. Contrast uh, 0.25 milliliter, and you see the lesion is enhancing homogeneously, absolutely, and in arterial phase, and at uh, one minute there is a small quantity of washout, more visible for minutes. Uh, it's a very subtle washout, but still present at six minutes. And uh, of course, we have seen the second lesion, but six minutes and four is have a washout, subtle washout was also washout. So we repeat, we repeated the injection just to look at the arterial phase of the second lesion and see the, the, the lesion is enhancing homogeneously at. Uh, in a field phase, it was washed out at six minutes, and the diagnosis is obvious about hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, an overweight patient with metabolic syndrome with this fine, fine, funny area in the liver. So we are thinking at the, at the beginning of geographical border cetosis. Um, elastography is not helpful because it seems that there is more stiff in the steatotic portion than in the other one. We made MRI. Uh, of course, we made MRI after contrast, but uh, we show now the uh, MRI without contrast, uh, just to see that this area is uh, more Hyper intense than the rest of the liver, the liver is very hyper intense because of steatosis, and this T1 and T2. And uh, this is in phase out phase, of course, the steatotic portion is losing fat, and there's no big difference between uh, the two areas of the liver. Corridor, in this case, is somehow helpful because you see some encasement of the vessel inside the area. And this is not possible in a geographical border steatosis. So the suspect of something different is now present. And uh, for that reason, we started with contrast. And you see the area is taking contrast immediately with very important announcement. Um, after that, the rest of the liver. And um, 24 seconds is here, but uh, 30 seconds, but uh, at two minutes we, are, we observe uh, an important washout of this region, a very big region all around the gallbladder. You see now, two minutes, three minutes, and uh, MRI with contrast, arterial phase is enhancing the same way as in contrast and ultrasound. Late portal phase, late phase, very late phase is uh, still contrast present, but in biliary phase there is washout. So, not possible to think to geographical border and that biopsy cholangiocellular carcinoma. Another case, young Asian lady with a small lesion, hypoechoic lesion. We tried with color, with a small vessel inside, so we tried with the spectral, and we see there is very low resistance inside. We are thinking to an FNH or something like this. And uh, we started with contrast, 0.25 milliliter. And we observe an announcement of the lesion uh, homogeneous with the rest of the liver. At 8 seconds, 16 seconds, and 22 seconds, we don't recognize the lesion because it's similar to the rest of the liver. But at one minute, the lesion is showing a small washout, very subtle washout. And the same thing at uh, three minutes, and we also wash out at three minutes. Our idea was a hepatocellular carcinoma, well differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma, 
And uh, for that reason, we made MRI, T1 in phase, T1 out phase, so that is fat inside. T2 which is still hyper intense, slightly hyper intense, with contrast, taking contrast homogeneously, taking the contrast even in late phase, but uh, losing contrast in biliary phase. So the diagnosis was catartic hepatocellular adenoma. So which, which kind of take-home points we can have? One milliliter is nowadays probably an excessive dose, masking the deeper portion of the liver or the spleen or the kidney or what you want. One half a milliliter is a successful and normally recommended dose, but in uh, some patients, uh, you can try 110 to 1.4 so 0.1, 0.25 milliliter will produce interesting results. Thank you very much for your attention.